Welcome to Reddit Aliens, Sirius, Biologists, Marine Biologists, Cryptozoologists. As far as legends go, what legendary animals do you think actually existed, or what legendary person may have actually been real? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Archaeologist here. There's a really interesting ancient Egyptian story called The Shipwrecked Sailor, in which a man is washed ashore a beautiful island and is apprehended briefly by an enormous serpent. In the story, the serpent tells him that there used to be hundreds of others like him, but a falling star wiped them all out. I think it's unlikely that the Egyptians had knowledge of dinosaurs, but there's a site called Wadi Hitton that has thousands of ancient whale skeletons from the Osun. I think it's possible they could have seen these skeletons and mistaken them for giant snakes. Herodotus actually tells similar tales of giant flying snakes in Egypt, and I suppose if you saw these skeletons but no trails, you might think they were capable of fly. Beowulf, who is featured in one of the most important texts written in Old English, may very well have been real. The epic details what people Beowulf belonged to, the Gates, who resided in modern Gotha land, and if I recall correctly, battles which have taken place according to historians, particularly between the Gates and the Swedes. Most intriguing to me are the facts that the locations of Beowulf's burial mound is included in the epic, and that there is what looks like a hill at that location in modern Sweden that has never been excavated. The Luska giant octopus. It supposedly lives in blue holes of the coast of Florida, and the amount of food and temperature of water both support the theory of an octopus living long enough to grow way larger than we expect based on our current records. I've heard of a hypothesis that states the Ragnarok myth actually described an impact event. The Midgard snake could be an object entering the atmosphere. Many myths about sea serpents probably stem from oar fishes. They look like sea serpents, are absolutely huge, live in almost every ocean, and sometimes wash ashore. I got all the information from a River Monsters episode though, so take it with a grain of salt. I regularly get to see pods of humpback whales at the beach where I surf. Most of the time, all you see is their backs as they partially surface from the water. Occasionally, one of them breaches mouth first, so you see a giant mouth emerge from the water. Other times, you see a giant tail emerge. If you were watching them and had no idea what a whale was, or that you were looking at multiple of them, I could easily imagine mistaking multiple whale backs as the coils of a colossal snake. I strongly suspect that this is the origin of legends of sea serpents. I mean, this seems completely plausible. I mean, to this day, even with all advances in technology, watching a humpback whale like breach the water is thrilling to a person. You can imagine somebody 10,000 years ago seeing that. Crazy. Very simple mythological creatures like black dogs were probably exaggerated stories of encountering wild dogs in the dead of night. They're often described as having glowing eyes, which isn't as unusual in effect when torchlight is reflected in dogs or cats' eyes. The black dog spirits or myths of the British Isles are also likely the grim Professor Trelawney was talking about in The Prisoner of Azkaban. A rock could have been real. It was most likely inspired by the elephant bird of Madagascar. An elephant bird was like a big-ass ostrich about 9 feet high. They didn't go extinct until the 16th or 17th century. There are many diseases that the origin of the vampire vampire myth can be traced back to. However, I think rabies fits it the most. In the olden days, people would tie those suspected of it into trees. In about three days' time, the disease would drastically change them. Extreme light sensitivity, paleness, aggression, excessive drooling. They could or would try to attack you and have bouts of either extreme slow fatigue or even adrenaline. Also, rabies can be passed from person to person through a bite, not just an infected animal. The Cyclops of Greek Mythology Go Google up an elephant skull. There's this huge hole right in the middle of it looking to all the world like a single eye. Now add this to the knowledge that the Cretan dwarf mammoth left subfossil bones on Crete easily discoverable, was one meter at the shoulder, and could be more or less assembled into a giant humanoid. The Kraken, the mythological and terrifying creature that lived on the Nordic seas. 
The legend never clarified if it was a giant squid or anything else, but it's the most accurate thing. The legend may have been created by people devising the bodies of giant squids 16 meters long, and they suppose it was deadly monster. The kraken was born. The Norwegians invented high-carbon steel when they were making swords they would out of bones of predators into the molten metal which added carbon. The fact that they didn't grasp the scientific concept made it even more metal. The Maori people of New Zealand have long told stories of pukai, a monstrous bird that was big enough to hunt and eat humans. Many believe that these stories are referring to Host's eagle. It was the largest species of eagle ever to have lived on Earth, with weights of around 30 pounds and wingspans almost reaching 10 feet. It lived on New Zealand's South Island and primarily hunted the flightless moa bird, which weighed about 500 pounds. Given the large size of its main prey, it's likely that the eagle may have also targeted lone humans as well. Interestingly enough, the host's eagle went extinct around the year 1400, not long after the Maori arrived in New Zealand. It's thought that its extinction can be attributed to habitat destruction combined with the extinction of the moa due to hunting by the Maori. Chupacabra. It has to be some poor sick animal with mange. Mange is highly contagious, so if a pack of coyotes or wild dogs got it, they would all have a weird ass appearance and attack other animals out of hunger. The Wendigo probably existed, just not as a creature. People in the far north who survived a brutal winter by eating a family member had a psychological escape hatch for the guilt and horror by convincing themselves they were transforming into a ravenous, murderous beast. They'd continue killing and eating in a hysteric delusion that they had no control over it. Wendigo hunters would then have to come and kill them and perform a shamanic ritual to assure the rest of the tribe that the taint wouldn't spread. It's actually an incredibly fascinating study into culturally specific mental illness. The lengths the mind will go to in order to avoid dealing with a traumatic event are so extraordinary that in that culture, they would actually continue to murder and cannibalize fellow tribe members under the delusion they had transformed into a monster. There's a small population of albino deer in my area, and they're beautiful, definitely ethereal looking and totally match the European description of a unicorn. Have you ever seen an albino deer? I live in an area where there are a lot of deer, and I've never seen one, so sounds pretty cool. Would love to. The Piazza Bird and the River Panther, Mishibiju. There was probably some species of large eel-like species that existed in the Mississippi River that has long gone extinct. There are too many concurrent myths describing similarish creatures from different places and cultures along the river in North America. I'm actually a biologist, but this has nothing to do with that, lol. My family is from Saudi Arabia. Back in the 40s, some tribal people still lived in these ancient caves on cliff sides, often in ravines like they'd done for thousands of years. My uncle grew up in a town near one of those tribes. They had their own dialect of Arabic and kept to themselves unless they needed something, usually medicine or something like that. Apparently, his whole town thought the cliff people were jinni, mythological fire spirits who take human form, and so would charge them for anything. They'd just give them what they wanted while praying under their breath. When I was working in the Amazon, I was told of a creature called Chulanchaki. They make gardens in the forest, generally of all one species of plant, and if you encounter them, you're supposed to walk around them. If you must pass through, you ask permission, walk through quickly, and don't touch anything. If you don't obey this, the chula chaki will attack you. Well, those forest gardens are the large hives of leafcutter ants, and if you spend any time inside them or disturb the vegetation in them, the ants will come out and attack you. Alright, as a historian, giants. They exist in some form over many cultures in history. My favorite story is about a Native American tribe that told the story of the giants that killed them to near extinction generations upon generations ago and how they were a horrible beast and quite large, all the characteristics of a giant. Truth be told, and this is probably true of most legends or accounts of giants, that it's just a height relative thing. A majority of a population was quite small back in the day, besides being easier to hide and run, 
less body mass meant less food needed and more chances of survival. But I digress. People were quite small, like average five-footers and less. Anyone who was taller was probably considered a giant, and a whole tribe of giant people, five foot ten and above, must have been especially terrifying when they were warring tribes or just a conflict with you. So the generational story was just about a smaller height-wise tribe that encountered a taller height-wise tribe and they fought. The story of the giants. The natives have a lot of stories of supernatural creatures that were just odd to them humans. The pale-faced beasts were probably Vikings. Vikings caused a whole migration of a tribe as well. It's really interesting in my field of work to just put things in perspective. You gain so much. Again, fact-based and logical. Um, I like learning about things like this that I definitely didn't know, and that makes a lot of sense about giants. Could just be tall. I feel this post is very similar to one a few weeks ago, but whatever, my comment is the same. Camel apart, described as having the print of a leopard with this body with a camel but an elongated neck and two mini backwards horns, nowadays referred to as a giraffe. Many thought it was mythical in certain parts of the world. Published archaeologist here, all over the world from Siberia to Australia, the Himalayas to Ohio, mankind has told stories of tall, bipedal apes that live in the forests. The First Nation of the Pacific Northwest call them the Sasquatch. The Nepalese call them Yeti, but today most people refer to them as Bigfoot. There was an entire line of humanoids called the robust Australophycenes that evolved right alongside us. They were about nine feet tall, extremely muscular, hairy, omnivorous, and importantly, lacked the big brain that we got. Because they mostly fed on things like roots, they were mostly arboreal, upright apes that had insane jaw muscles, which required an anchor point on their skull called the sagittal crest. This is what separates our branch of the human family from theirs. While we lack the crest and have comparatively weak jaw muscles, we gain the power of speech and abstract thought, while our robust cousins got by on brute force alone. Many sightings of Bigfoot often report a domed head, hinting towards the identity of the beast. Their fossils are exceedingly rare. As a matter of fact, all human fossils are rare, especially the really old ones. Nevertheless, the youngest robust Australopithecine fossil is dated to roughly 100,000 years ago. It is entirely possible that they survived long after that, as previously stated, the fossilization process is extremely difficult and some species pass into the dark without ever leaving a fossilized trace of their existence. If the last ones died out sometime around 11,000 years ago, which marked the younger Dreyas extinction event, they would have been around during the peopling of the world, solidifying their place in many cultures' mythology. Is it possible that they're still around today? There is a worldwide environmental collapse culminating in mass extinction, the likes of which the world has not seen for 65 million years. Species are dying out at an exponential rate, and habitats are being annihilated for human habitation. If they have not yet gone extinct, they will be within our lifetime. P.S. The aliens did not build the pyramids, you absolute twats. I believe that Bigfoot probably does exist, or at least did until very recently, but I doubt that it was a unique species. My theory is that what people see is a mundane animal, probably a large brown bear with serious genetic deformities. Encountering a seven-foot bear with mange, maybe a deformed cranium, possible scars from fights with other bears, and other such traits would certainly trigger a fight-or-flight response. You see something like that, you haul ass in the other direction. When you stop, you're not 100% certain of what you saw, so your brain fills in the details. So you take a deformed animal and mix it with an imaginative mind that knows what the popular version of Bigfoot looks like, and you get a bona fide Bigfoot sighting. Unicorns. It's just the rhinoceros. Now, hear me out. If anyone has seen any medieval drawing of real animals, like the elephant, etc., when the Europeans described the rhino, and some of them had to draw it, they drew a horse with a horn, and voila, the unicorn is born. 